Good morning, all you VIP kid teachers out there. I thought I would just uh, take a minute. I just finished up being in the uh, VIP kid classroom today. Um, this morning I had a, a full lineup of kids, and so I uh, finished up and I'm, I'm kind of ready for a little bit of a, a break. But I thought I would just pop on real quick and say a couple quick things. Um, first, a little funny from today. Um, I had two funny things happened to me this morning back to back and it, and I have been struggling with laughing all through the morning as a result. Um, first of all, I have I had a little girl who saw this uh, screen behind me and she was talking to me for the first few minutes and I had showed her what our incentive was going to be and we were talking a little bit about that and all of a sudden she said, excuse me teacher, can I ask my mom a question? And I said, you may. And so she, I, she took her headphones off and she looked at her mom and she said, mom, come here, come here. And then in Chinese, she asked, is this classroom real or fake? <laughs> and I said, it's real. And she looked at me and she said, how did you know what I said? And I said, I understood you. And you asked your mom if this is real or fake. And she's like, Yes. And then she looked at me and she looked at her mom and she looked and she said, is it real? <laughs> and I said, no, it is fake. <laughs> and so she thought it was so interesting and she couldn't understand how I made the, the incentive pop on in front of the classroom if it was real. So she was very intrigued and she was staring very intently at the screen and her mom and I laughed so much about it. Um, and then the next student I had, so I went from a seven-year-old girl to a 11-year-old boy and he must have got, have, have got new, gotten, have gotten, listen to me, we can't do any English this morning. He must have had braces put on because you could tell, you know, that feeling you get when you first get braces that it just doesn't feel right and you're doing this and he's looking at himself in the portal, the whole class, he's going, looking at his braces. So I laughed so hard um, because I, I was trying not to, not to react to it, but he, he, I don't think he even thought about the fact that in my face, he's literally going, like looking at his braces and feeling them. And so I was trying not to laugh. And he was, he was a new learner, a new student, a fairly new student, level two, mid, midway through level two. So he doesn't have um, very high language skills, but he's an older student. So I, I definitely didn't want to make him feel like I was laughing at him. But so those are my two funny things for today. I thought I would just do a real quick update video on those of you who are taking your Mach 1 and 2. I just have a lot of um, people right now that are in the midst of their mocks. And one of the things that I'm noticing is that there's a lot of anxiety and stress involved with that. And I can relate because I, I think in previous videos I've mentioned, I almost did not take my Mach 2 class because I was so stressed out about it. But um, I did take it and I am glad because here I am to say I am enjoying my class very much, my classes and, and teaching. I'm enjoying the classroom. But I do want to say one thing and that is this. Um, you as a teacher are going to bring some new things to the table that another teacher wouldn't. So when you're going through that mock material, when you're going slide by slide through that, first of all, don't interpret and take the teacher directions as the advisement about what they want done, but take your cues from the objectives and from the target sentences. Now, when I say that, you will get that information emailed to you. That needs to be your handbook for what you're going to do throughout that entire mock class. You're always going to be looking to hit the objectives and the target sentences. You don't want to finish your mock class without one of the objectives or target sentences being used. So make that be a priority in the planning of your step-by-step -step guide. Secondly, 
I always give out to people when they email me. I give them a step-by-step, slide-by-slide guide on how to teach the class. However, you are you. And you have talents that I don't have. And so you know things I don't know, and I know things you don't know. So what you need to do is make that information be usable to you. So switch it up. Uh, Use it in a different way if it works for you. When you are in your evaluation, you are not going to fail a slide if the exact teacher direction isn't used. Now, if you do, then that means you didn't use the object, hit the objective or use the target sentences. But we have the capability of modifying within the mock. Now, I would suggest and highly suggest that you do your very best to use the teacher directions. However, if you find, for example, on the stand-up, sit down slide, you're struggling with that because of your camera setup, then what I have done and did do in my mock classes was before the class, I mentioned to the evaluator, slide number four or six or whatever slide it is, I need to modify that and here's why. Then it gives you a chance to dialogue with the evaluator And if, perchance, you have an evaluator that says, no, you cannot use thumbs up or thumbs down, then you know. I would highly suggest talking to your evaluator before the mock class. Second, this, and I'm saying this because that has come across my email so many times this week, so many times. Second, talk to them about what you think might be your deficiency. For instance, can you see me well? Because I've had people say, what do I do if I don't have enough lights? But I don't want to buy more lights until I know I have the job that I'm buying lights for. I suggest you talk to your evaluator. Are those evaluators people like you and me? Yes, they are. So talk to them and say, hey, I plan on purchasing more lights. I'm thinking my lighting doesn't look good. Would you give me some advice? How do I look in the screen? Let me give you an example, a real life my example. I said to my evaluator, I have an external webcam and I've looked at this on Skype, but I'm not sure. Are you, if I look here, am I looking at you eye to eye? Or if I look here, am I looking at you eye to eye? Because you know what? They are different, aren't they? This is my webcam. This is the portal. So I didn't know for sure which one. And do you know what my mock evaluator's response was? Good question. Hey, tell me something. And I want you to tell me. And she did a few things with her classroom and we helped each other because she said, I've never had anybody ask me that before. And that's a good question to ask before your evaluation. So use them. Understand that they're there to help you. They are not there to just do this, no, to you about everything. They're there to help you, give you suggestions, tell you how you might do it better. So, hmm, ask them, right? Because they know. So that's what I did. On a few of my slides that I didn't know, I simply asked, hey, what do you think? I I think if I stand up and sit down on this, it's going to look really funny when I leave the screen. Is that good or bad? Maybe you want me to do that. Maybe You think that would be fun for this student. I don't know that yet because I'm not hired. So I want to ask. So those are a few things that I would suggest. If you're nervous, think about asking the evaluator before 
the evaluation. My evaluators were both open to questions, and in fact, they were generous about them with me and gave me information. Now, you may not think to ask them because you think I'm walking into an interview and it's not appropriate to go into an interview and ask, so what's your company about, right? This is a little different. You've already passed your interview, right? And now you're on your mock class. So take advantage of that, that um, teacher who has the knowledge and has the experience and now she's there and she can tell you that would be fine, that would not be fine and they'll give you some suggestions. Also, halfway through your mock class, mock one and mock two, you will have a time where you'll stop, you'll take a time out, and you'll talk with your evaluator. During that time, I highly suggest you offer up some things that you've noticed you don't do well, or didn't do well, or could use some more help on and give them the option to tell you what to do differently or share some external information with you after the mock that will help you for the next class. This shows that you are eager to learn and willing to listen to feedback and I think that says a lot in an evaluation. So that's another option for you to think about to avoid those nerves. The last thing I want to say before I close is this you are going to be nervous. That is normal. You will not teach a perfect mocked class. Probably there's a teacher out there somewhere who has, and I just haven't met her yet. And I am not her, so I don't have that experience. But what you can do is demonstrate enthusiasm, demonstrate encouragement, demonstrate demonstrate a smile, show that you've read all of the material and you know the objectives and the target sentences. Have you been able to figure out that that's important? Note that, write that, make that in bold in your notes, guys, that's important. And show yourself as someone who is ready and willing to learn. Those are all great things that are gonna help you pass Mach 1 and Mach 2. Those are a few things to help you with your nerves. Now, I'm available and willing to hear you if you have questions, so please feel free to email me at the email address below. If you're just getting started, I have a link. You can use it for referral, and I'd be happy to walk you through the steps. Also, if you email me, I will send you lesson plans for Mach 1 Dem or for the demo interview, Mach 1 and Mach 2. So all of those things could maybe help you with your anxiety or nerves about mock classes. But guys, listen, at the end of the day, show energy, enthusiasm, and excitement for the job. That is going to take you a long way in this process and every day that you teach hereafter. So a few thoughts for today. Have a great day, guys. See you soon.